this as a separate subject. Okay, you are having a separate subject in the uh, first year as current shipping environment. However, during second year, this subject is not there. So myself, uh, Captain Prakash Zog, and uh, I am with industry for about 40 years or so. And uh, something about me is uh, I have shared my email ID. If you have something, you can ask me on the email, no problem. Some of the other time I will see the email, but when you are sending email, just do not just send email and ask questions. You have to introduce yourself first that I am student from first year and I am uh, in current shipping and uh, with respect to this, uh, uh, I would like to have this. Okay. Anything you want to have sharing of uh, your material, uh, recorded lectures, or the PPTs, everything you have to uh, communicate with the uh, administration office of Narutta Moraji Institute of Shipping, NMIS. Okay. So let us go further. There is my even uh, phone number also. I'm not sure whether you are able to see that phone number or not. It is here somewhere. 9821683920. It is just a little bit faint. I kept it faint because then <laughs> students will get as much less number as possible. But anyway, 9821683920, that is. Okay. So let's quickly, I will introduce myself. I may not have time to get introduction of all the students because <laughs> so much time we don't have, luxury of time we don't have. Okay. So quickly going ahead with uh, my introduction, self-introduction. Okay. Fun by sir, this is not uh, okay. I will let me check how it is changing. This slide, okay, now it has changed a little bit. Okay, okay. I started my sea career with Shipping Corporation of India in 1977. I was sailing till uh, 2003 for about 25 years, and thereafter, I was marine superintendent with Shipping Corporation of India up to 2014 where I was heading offshore commercial department also, and I was superintendent also, and uh, special projects also I was handling. Okay. From 2014 onwards, I am uh, faculty with uh, Narottam Muraji Institute of Shipping, NMIS, and also I am attached full-time to Training Ship Rahman. Training Ship Rahman happens to be oldest institute of Marine Maritime Training Institute in India, and established in 1910, okay? Where at any given time, more than about 800 students are taking uh, uh, education, maritime education, and who are aspiring candidates to join the C. Okay, I am also certified auditor, lead auditor with ISO 9001-2015 standards and registered with IRQS, okay? I'm also examiner with Mumbai University for BSc Nautical Science. I'm uh, also working as consultant during whatever time I get. And I had done two projects. One uh, project uh, I was consultant uh, uh, to government of India uh, after I left SEI. And that was a project uh, in Myanmar, that is uh, Burma. And also I'm salvage expert, okay. Social service now towards uh, after retirement, what I'm doing is uh, career guidance in Merchant Navy. I give free advices and uh, free uh, lectures on career guidance for last more than 14 years, okay? This is a felicitation done by Narutta Muraji Institute of Shipping to me in 2016 as uh, their best uh, uh, lecturer or professor. So that is that, okay. This is now for your guidance of uh, current shipping environment, what we have. We have 12 lectures. 12 lectures means 1.5 hours, two lectures on every Sunday. And such we will have about six Sundays. 
and if possible we may get seventh sunday last batch i got seventh sunday so total 14 lectures were there uh, topics are uh, very uh, huge and uh, uh, even covering them in uh, seven sundays becomes little difficult but still i will try to just do justice as much as possible 15 chapters are there in uh, your uh, um, material course material and where offshore and logistics were introduced uh, in last two years offshore logistics was introduced in uh, uh, one before that is uh, 2019 onwards okay as a separate uh, subject introduction to logistic okay <clears throat> you have to study the syllabus as well as course material at least once you must go through the course material and thereafter you can get more and more information from the net also that also uh, avenues are open to you okay uh, also there are many question papers not only last five years but uh, your book uh, course material is having more than five years question papers plus uh, institute will also provide you the many question papers of previous years which will give you a little idea how is the exams and how to prepare for it. Okay. Passing rate is quite low in uh, current shipping environment. It used to be 35% and uh, uh, it increased in 2000 when I joined 2014, it used to be 35%, but now it is uh, somewhere close to 50 to 60%. Okay. I want to push it up to 80%. But that is not happening. That's why I keep on giving this uh, um, introduction uh, in my introduction uh, starting that how to prepare. Practice three hours writing because uh, uh, nowadays we do not have practice of writing. We can type it better. Of course, in pandemic, we are having uh, online uh, um, answer sheets writing and uh, that is a different story. But otherwise, the pandemic is not there, then you are sitting uh, in classroom and writing for uh, three hours, uh, one paper. And uh, this is very subjective type of uh, answers you are expected to write because this is not uh, 10 standard, 12 standard or your uh, degree where you are having uh, only objective type questions and you just say yes, no, thank you. And you get marks, no. This is subjective type means, uh, only five questions are there for 200 marks uh, paper, only five questions. And uh, five questions, each question carries 20 marks. Total eight questions are given. Out of that five, you have to attempt. Question number one is compulsory. Okay. Then when we say 20 marks, to get 20 marks, you cannot expect to have to uh, getting 20 marks, just writing eight to 10 lines. Almost each mark, you have to write at least three to five lines. Those are, those are like a thumb rule. And uh, more and more you write, more and more write your material, material writing. Many a times I find that uh, um, students who have not studied well, what they do, they just keep on repeating the question for uh, nearly 30, 40 times. Only question they write in different, different language. So uh, that is not going to fetch any marks, but you have to write material. You have to write the uh, uh, core of the uh, topic and uh, questions will be just sim single line question. The questions will be just single line, one line question, but answer will be five pages. It's like that. Then only you can get marks. You must attempt all five questions or so all five answers you must write then only you are going to have good hopes of crossing your limits to 60%, 70%. But if you have only attempted only four questions and out of 80, suppose you have to get 50 marks, it is a little bit difficult unless you are writing very good uh, this thing and you are very, very confident about the answers. Okay, so all five questions you must attend, uh, attempt and uh, you must write. And you must have uh, this practice of writing. Why I'm saying practice of writing? Because uh, during this uh, uh, 
कंप्यूटर इरा और योर स्मार्टफोन्स लैपटॉप्स देन योर पीसीज एवरीबडी इज यूज टू डू इट फास्ट 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 विथ इवन कंप्यूटर्स प्रोवाइड यू ऑटो करेक्शन ऑफ योर स्पेलिंग्स देन क्विक टाइपिंग सो योर ब्रेन ऑल्सो मूव इट इज ऑलरेडी सेट फॉर अ हायर स्पीड but when you go for writing by your hand your thoughts go much ahead and hand does not cope up and that mismatch will uh, put you in uh, big trouble in exam hall when you will appear for exam in case if it is by 2022 if pandemic is over and if you happen to come to classrooms and write the exam then it's going to be a big task so at least keep practice of writing and what happens then spellings with computers we are not much worried about spellings because it corrects automatically or it will give you red uh, dot down below it will highlight and you can get that spelling uh, correctly but when you have to write and suppose spelling you are not getting at that moment you are going to spend time on that because it will not allow you to go ahead your mind will not allow you to go ahead and you will have to keep on wasting time okay so that practice you must keep of writing with hand and this is uh, already i have told 20 marks is question five questions you have to attempt out of eight question number 1 is compulsory okay so here you in uh, shipping many abbreviations are there and those abbreviations and their full form you must by heart it because many abbreviations what happens what happens this abbreviations sometimes abbreviations and full form are not having correlation to certain words certain uh, alphabets irfan bhai jara mute kar dijiye mute all yes sir ha somebody is the mic is on so thank you take your mic and go thank so abbreviations uh, please uh, uh, by heart it uh, like i will tell you like itf itf when we say the full form is international transport workers federation w is missing from that and when you are in exam hall and suppose this itf comes then you will say you will uh, put your logic and you will say international trade federation then sometimes you will be confused you will say indian trade federation sometimes you will say indian uh, transport federation something like that so i sometimes it stands for indians i sometimes it stands for international and you must know when where it stands which is international which is indian okay as we are studying this uh, 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 merchant navy topics and the business of transportation so it is international business and when international business certain terminology certain terms you must be familiar with okay like associations federations councils we are going to learn about that then uh, port infrastructure so basic how is the port infrastructure that also we are going to study then port state control flag state control or um, float floating island concept ship as floating island that also we are going to study i am going to explain this is not given in your book but i have made it simple for students to understand the uh, basics of the uh, you know uh, uh, topics okay then you can tell me whether you uh, got the correct uh, understanding or not okay so here in the, wherever in shipping we will use the word state it is not like state our states like gujarat maharashtra kerala madhya pradesh it's not like that state means is a country so wherever in shipping state is used it is a country okay so basics these things you we must uh, uh, you know uh, note it and make it uh, sure that we understand it and we remember it okay and uh, of course we have to study even united nations and its various arms because it is closely connected to shipping shipping is being international united nations plays very important role and all these uh, international bodies also work with uh, shipping like 
IMO, WHO, uh, uh, World Trade Federation. So, so these type of things we must learn. Okay. Further, now these are uh, virtual classes. Earlier we used to have four centers and uh, uh, Nariman Point used to have two batches. Then we had uh, Pawai one batch and uh, Nerul in New Bombay one batch. But now it is virtual lecture. It is not. It is not a contact lecture. So there are limitations. Many a times nowadays uh, since last year pandemic, uh, many people kept on advertising that oh contact classes are uh, no good. These virtual classes much better than contact classes. But no, my or my experience uh, taking virtual classes and physical classes, contact classes. The contact classes you cannot replace with virtual classes because here there is no um, uh, uh, eye contact. We are not seeing each other. I'm just talking to my uh, laptop uh, screen and I don't know whether uh, students are attentive, not attentive. Mm -hmm. Somebody has just logged in and he has gone out somewhere and after one hour he will come and he will log out. So lecture is attended. So, but of course that will not happen here, but in schools and colleges it is happening. But uh, as uh, this is a you know, postgraduate diploma and uh, most of you are seriously trying to complete this or you want to do it, that's why. So it is not compulsion. Like when we put uh, school uh, children to schools, it is compulsion on them to attend that uh, lecture. And that is why they just log in. Log in and okay, my attendance is marked. And then they're roaming around somewhere else. So that will not happen here, I, uh, uh, I'm sure, because <laughs> most of you are already grown up and uh, matured enough, okay? So virtual classes, one thing you have to, because many a times you will keep your videos on and uh, you should not be, uh, you should not be uh, coming with, uh, you know, just uh, wearing anything uh, on you. You must be careful about that. You must be wearing uh, at least some decent clothes and uh, your background also, you must tell people that I'm attending lecture and uh, please do not make a uh, uh, lot of uh, noise or chit chatting because by chance you are asking question and you have unmuted yourself, the lot of uh, disturbance comes, then uh, always remain uh, muted so that uh, you, uh, you are not disturbing the class. There are a huge number of students attending. It is already one, one, three students have logged in that you also can see. So general etiquettes and for virtual classes, we are calling net classes, we are calling it as netiquettes. So netiquettes you must observe. And these are some of the netiquettes. Whenever you are asking question, be brief. Whenever you are putting on chat, sometimes uh, on chat, whatever you have put, uh, question, it may not be noticed by me because within these three hours, it may not be possible, but whatever I can see, I will try to answer. Okay. It cannot be most inter interactive sessions, but uh, you can, in between, you can ask something. I will give you time. And, uh, <coughs> okay. Then uh, uh, when you are asking uh, on the uh, chat box, if you write something, so if you are asking something, then write question. So that is that, that means you write Q. Okay. Otherwise, uh, whether you are making comment or you have understood, yes, no, thank you. That is a separate question. But if you write Q, means it can be quickly taken up uh, for uh, resolving. Okay. And uh, you can log in again if you are disconnected by any chance. Or I am disconnected, suppose, whenever my uh, things are restored, it is possible because uh, uh, still in uh, our country, we are not so much lucky enough to have uninterrupted supply of power. So uh, even in cities also, power supply goes, okay? Or net also gives uh, this thing, you know, breakdowns. So those are the constraints. So in case you are not able to listen to me, in case you are not able to listen to see my PowerPoint presentation, you can tell, you can request Irfan Bhai, you can tell me or you can say, okay? So with this, uh, thank you so much. And we will move to our 
topic. So, any questions on uh, first introduction of this subject? Any questions, you can just unmute yourself and quickly ask. Let me just check. Somebody has written, okay, four chats are there. Uh, why don't you rename your ID? Okay. One, three dots. Okay. 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 So, not many chats are there or not no questions are asked or even uh, nobody is speaking or nobody is asking also by unmuting themselves. So anyway, let us move to next, our regular lecture and the topic, today's topic, okay? So today's topic is registrations of ships. This is the name of the topic which we are going to discuss. And registration of ships is definitely similar to what you do registration of other things. Okay, so let us see what it is. Okay. In now screen on screen, you can see what all things you can see. House and car. Yes, okay. You can see house, Car is there with number bike. and you are number having motorcycles bike. also. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I have purposely put this uh, uh, screen for you that all these are properties and some of them are uh, movable properties. Some of them are not movable immobile properties. Okay. So house, land, it's immobile property. Car, motorcycles are mobile properties. And each of the property you have to register when you are purchasing new or when you are sailing. Sailing, purchase, purchasing new, every time you have to register. So, ship is also considered as property. And it is. It is property, just like your car. But this property can be moved on the oceans internationally. Internationally, anywhere you can move this property. Okay. And that is why it becomes mandatory or it becomes requirement that such registrations are coming under international rules. Okay, now suppose we take car or house. Now let us take the example of car. Suppose you purchase motorcycle or car, where you can register it? So answer will be, you can register it at RTO office, where your house is within the jurisdiction area of that RTO, your house address residential address. There only you can register the car. You cannot stay in Delhi and register your car in Mumbai. No. You have to have residential address in Mumbai to register your car in Mumbai. If you are staying in Delhi, you have to register it in Delhi within which RTO jurisdiction you are falling in. Then these cars are not going to go out from India or even they are not allowed to go interstate also. There are certain rules like goods carrier, buses, they cannot go interstate unless they are registered like that. But ships are not like that. Ships are going international. Ships are going from one country to other country, one ocean to other ocean, one continent to other continent, and one hemisphere to other hemisphere, entire globe, entire uh, earth, they can move. So you must have registration with international things kept in mind, following international rules and regulations and conventions. Okay. 
whenever you register your house car mobile property mobile property why you have to register so registration you have to do so that you become the owner you get title of the property so tomorrow somebody says that this car is mine some your neighbor says that this car is mine and i he will take it so to say that this is your vehicle you have to have titled you have to prove that you are owner of the property and that prove to proving owner of the property is done by registration so you get registered document as your owner it may let it be flat let it be house let it be land let it be motorcycles let it be car so similarly ship also same ship also when you register you become the owner and by doing this what what government gets or what you get you get okay you get one is ownership what government gets so government does not do registration free they will take registration fees they will take registration fees and stamp duty or whatever other taxes are there that they will take and this is one of the source of revenue for the governments so source of revenue and they earn huge amount of money if property is having high value then government earns very high revenue and in turn what government gives you let us take example of cars what government gives once you register your car so they will give you a number registered number for the car they will give you registration certificate for the car and then you have to also buy you are bound to comply with rules of that wherever you have registered your property whatever rules are there like car if it has to be every year passing is required you have to do it you will get number for the car you will get registration certificate and in turn government gets revenue government gets data how many cars are registered how many power engines are there in total area how many vehicles are there how much big roads are required government will build roads for you government will put traffic police to control this government will open offices for registration so on so forth or tomorrow suppose you meet with accident government will have inquiry and courts to run and resolve the issues so all these facilities government gives so similar thing is true for the cars of uh, ships also okay so let us move to next slide these are the ships in on the screen and these are different types of ships this is a bulk carrier ship then this is your general cargo ship this is the refer carrier this is container vessel this is a gas carrier and this is row row so different different types of ships are there that also you will learn and all these ships are considered as move, moving property movable property and for our for our understanding or for easy understanding this property you can take easily the price of the property is 100 crores any ship small ship big ship you can take average price as 100 crores rupees some ships may be price can be 1200 crores 700 crores 800 crores but average price you can take for your calculations like tomorrow suppose you will have to calculate suppose you have to calculate the standing charges of the ship or how much loan is required for the ship or how much will be outgo on the interest of the banks which are giving you loan so 100 crore you can take easily 100 crore rupees 
is average value of the ship. And when we say 100 crore, and what we are seeing in our earlier picture is car. Car, how much price of the car, average price? Not more than 10 lakhs, maybe 5 lakhs, average price we are saying. Some cars are very expensive, 1, 1 crore, 2 crore rupees or so. But average price is about 5 lakh, 5 lakh rupees. Where 5 lakh and where is 100 crore? And if government is going to charge 1% registration fee, 3.5% stamp duty on the properties, so how much ship you are going to get revenue? One ship registered, you will get nearly 5%. So you will get 5 crores at one go. You register one ship in any country, you will get 5 crores. Yes, appreciating? Yes or no? So this is looked as a source of revenue, huge source of revenue by the countries. Okay, at the same time, countries will have laws also. Like car you register, you are having, you, are, you have to obey the laws what RTO is making or what state governments or the central government is making. And like every year passing, and taking certificate from the people, uh, from the RTO, or taking insurance, or having a registered or licensed driver. So all these things you have to obey and you have to follow. So same thing is true with the ships also. The ships also are having rules and regulations to run the ships and you have to follow them. Okay, so registration wherever you do, you have to follow the rules and regulation of that country as well as as ship is running international, you have to follow the rules which are based on international standards. Okay. So what I explained you, this is the list goes. See, vehicles, registration office, you have to go. Ships also, you have to go to registration office. You have to go to local, national, local, and this is only national activity. But ships, it is international activity. It is not local activity. Okay. Here documentation is required. Here also documentation required. I've just tried to compare registration of vehicles and registration of ships. Okay. Then fees and stamp duty. Here also fees, stamp duty, and one more column added here that is custom duty because if ship is manufactured we will not use henceforth word manufactured because in shipping we don't say ship is manufactured car is manufactured goods are manufactured but ship is built we always say ship is built by ship builder so wherever ship is built so most of the ships are built in Nowadays, leading country, China, Korea, Japan, and Europe. So those are people who are leading in shipbuilding and maximum number of ships are built. So people have to import. Suppose I purchase a ship being Indian. I have to build, I have to take ship from maybe China or Korea. And I bring in the ship. I will have to pay custom duty also. Because I have imported the property. So I have to pay custom duty also. So they, here are three things, fees, stamp duty and custom duty. And custom duty, suppose custom duty, stamp duty, fees of all these things, suppose comprises of 10, 10% and suppose I import ship which is costing 100 crores, I have to pay immediately when I bring ship, I have to pay 10 crores to government. Yes? So it is expensive business. It is not very uh, easy or very cheap business. Okay. You have to follow when you register vehicles, you have to follow Motor Vehicle Act. Here you have to follow Merchant Shipping Act. We are talking about India and so for the valid for the other countries also. Each country will have different, different uh, their names for the act. But in India, we are saying Merchant Shipping Act. Okay. Vehicles can be registered with RTO, but ships can be registered with maritime administration of the country. 
who is providing this facility of registration of ships. So in India, government of India, director general of shipping, they are providing this facility in wherever it is required. So Mumbai, Calcutta, Cochin, Chennai, ships can be registered. You cannot, you don't require every district of India ship registration office because that much business is also not there and there is no requirement and there are no ships going to each and every district of the country. So it is only where the ports are there and where such requirement is re there, then only these offices are open. Okay. What you get here? You get RC book, registration book for the car and number plate, number you get, registration number. And what ship gets is COR is certificate of registry. Certificate of registry you get plus you get port of registry. So whichever port you are registering your ship, that port is called as port of registry. And this port of registry is there on the car also. If I go back to the earlier slide here, now you see here, MH12. MH12 is port of registry of the car. MH12, MH is standing for Maharashtra. 12 is for Pune. RTO office Pune, DE is serial number and 1433 is the registered number of the car. So are you able to see by, by seeing the number plate, are you able to know from which state this car has come? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. yes okay. So you know by just looking at the number plate, where this car belongs to, which which at least district or which at least RTO office it belongs to and which state it is belonging to. And similarly, for ships also, you are having port of registry. So port of registry is also written in all the documents as well as on the ship. On the stern of the ship, stern means it is the after part of the ship, the port of registry is written. Then ship also gets flag. Flag, why we are saying flag? And uh, many of you may not understand this flag thing. So let me just briefly tell you what is this flag thing. Because shipping is international, the owner of the ship may be staying anywhere, unlike your car owner. Car owner stays in Mumbai, he has to register ship only in Mumbai. And that also within wherever that RTO office is falling within his address, residential address. But ships being international, you can register ship anywhere. Whichever country you want, you can register your ship. So suppose I am Indian and suppose my country allows me to register ship outside India, that is also required. Okay, some countries do not allow, like India. India does not allow ship to register outside India. There are certain conditions uh, under which you can register ship outside India, but uh, like European countries or any other countries which are having free trades, they are allowing their businessmen to go out anywhere and register your ship anywhere. You own that ship. So suppose tomorrow I buy a ship and I register, I prefer to register anywhere in the world. So once I register ship, suppose I register ship in Singapore, then port of registry of the ship is Singapore and flag of the ship is Singapore. So nationality of the ship has become Singapore. Similarly, as similarly to your car, MH12. So nationality of the car is Pune, Maharashtra Pune. So where the root Janam Kundli kaha likha hai, to Pune mein likha hai Maharashtra mein. So similarly, ship's port of registry, if it is Singapore, then flag of the ship is Singapore, nationality of the ship becomes Singapore, 
and ship's port of registry is Singapore. Certificate of registry is also given by the Singapore registration office. Okay. Let us go further. What you get? Vehicle you register, you get title for the vehicle. Title means its ownership and ship also same, same. As soon as you get certificate of registry, certificate of registry will be given on your name with your residential address. But this residential address can be anywhere in the world for the ships. But for vehicles and properties, you have to register these properties and vehicles only where you are staying in your residential area only, not anywhere in India also. But ships unlike, you can register it anywhere in the world, okay? Government gets huge revenue and data. Data means how many number of cars are registered, how many flats are registered, how many buildings are registered, how many motorcycles are registered. And with this data, government keeps on doing logistics, how, what support, who they can provide to you, what services they can provide to you, they can work on it. Similarly, for ships also, it is a huge revenue generating machine. And many smaller countries, which do not have much income, they give some special facilities to ship owners and register their ships and make it as revenue model. Okay. They, the data may not be important to them so much as maybe car registration, suppose you are doing car registration in suppose Delhi, the data is much required for Delhi municipality or Delhi government that how many cars are going to be coming on the road. And I have to provide such a width of roads or so much signal, so much police to control this, okay? Then for vehicles, annual inspection is required or periodical inspection is required, maybe after five years, 10 years, 15 years, whatever rule says. Annual fees also may be possible and taxes also are possible as per the rules. Similar way for ships also, annual inspection fees and taxes are coming into play, okay? This taxes means, suppose you are, you are registering, suppose truck, and you are doing business. Suppose I have registered 10 trucks on my name. So income tax authorities also get hint that I am doing business with 10 trucks. I must be earning something and I'm not filing my returns. So they are going to catch on you for taxes. So similarly for ships also, taxes are there. But now these annual inspection fees taxes are in the country where ship is registered. It is not where the uh, port, it straight away changes to country, okay? So after comparing this shore properties and the uh, ship as property, let's move to next one. Registration of ships in India, property average cost. I'm just giving this example. It is not that 100 crore, any ship you can get with 100 crores. It can be even 1000 crores or more also, but just for your understanding, okay? If you are Indian national, if you are citizen of India and if you purchase ship, you have to register ship only in India. You cannot register it outside India. There are some conditions that you can register that we'll discuss later, but you have to register ship in India and follow the Merchant Shipping Act. That freedom is not given, that being Indian, you can register your ship outside India and have level playing field for this business, international business, okay? Registry for the ships is must if NRT net registered tonnage of the ship is more than 15 tons. This is as per Merchant Shipping Act, registration rules, okay? And Merchant Shipping Act 1958, part five deals with registration of ships, okay? Let us see further. As I said, port of registry, in India, you can register ships with Mumbai, Calcutta, Kochi, Chennai. 
and such other places where central government will take out that issue and they will say that okay registration office is required at say suppose uh, mundra or kandla then yes why not if demand is there if many ships are going to be registered there then yes okay so but main main ports where ships are registered mostly is mumbai calcutta kochi and chennai okay as soon as you register ship you get nationality for the ship and the flag nationality means suppose you register ship in india the ship becomes indian property and flag of the ship is india indian flag okay how it makes and what is that uh, floating island concept that we will study you get title and ownership yes and you can then mortgage also because registration is there then the registration certificate if bank is giving you loan it will be mortgage with the loan it will be mortgage with the bankers so the bankers are also depending on this registration and little authenticity of the property and the ownership so for getting loans or mortgaging the properties it is also required for it is also required to register and make yourself as a owner officially okay registration information registered office registrar office can provide you this information suppose you go and ask them that so and so ship can you show me the record because i am interested so they will charge some some fees to you and they will give you information because you may be cargo owner you may be insurer you may be uh, dealing with shipping you may be purchasing ship you may be giving loan to the party so such information is available from the registrar office and registrar office is taking all the information about the owner and his address and his aadhar card pan card in india yes everything company's name everything is taken and entire janam kundli is registered with that registrar office along with the ship and also ships particulars also are entered there entire ships particulars what is the length of the ship what is capacity of the ship what is breadth of the ship all such type of things are registered there okay then details of vessel and owner so suppose you want to know the owner you want to know you want to know who is the official owner of the ship you can go to registrar office and find out or you can check the registration certificate certificate of registry of the ship and you can find out the owner's details and it is giving revenue to government as we have seen okay so suppose indian ship you purchase you build indian ship in korea order it bring it to india and government is going to get say about 10 crores okay so your value has already added to more than 10 crores uh, on the original value okay so entitlement to all the privileges under merchant shipping act so we are saying it like like big some concessions or something uh, uh, plus points to do the business are given by registering ship in india that is how we project it but it may not be okay under the law of the flag a vessel and its crew are subject to the country whose flag the ship is flying so owner may be having different nationality ship is registered in third country crew put on ship may be having different nationality but ship's nationality is where ship is registered and ship has to follow the those national laws suppose as we have been discussing indian ship owner and suppose ship is registered in singapore and ship is operated by suppose uh, chinese people but law of the singapore will be applicable on the ship okay so ship is flying and conduct of affairs on board is governed by the law of the country the member of the crew 
are not in any way control the law of the country of which they are subject. Means, suppose tomorrow, suppose ship is registered in Panama, and suppose owner is in Europe, and ship's captain is Indian, ship does not become Indian, or ship rules also on ship are not Indian. It has to be Panamian because ship is registered in Panama, ship's flag is Panama, and ship's nationality remains Panama. Okay, although owner different nationality, captain different nationality, crew different nationality, and flying across the world is also in different different nations. Okay, and this is how it looks. This is what I said as stern of the ship here. And uh, this is stern means it's a uh, back side of the ship or from behind how ship will look. This is the name of the ship, Grace One. This is the name of the ship. Name owner can decide what name he wants to give to the ship. And this is the port of registry, Panama. And this is flag of the ship. So Panama national flag is flown by the ship, although ship may be owned by a Britisher. Crew operating ship may be Indian, including captain, but nationality of the ship is Panamian. Here you have one more thing written down below is IMO number. Here, nowadays, you are required to write IMO, which is given internationally, sequential number. IMO number is written here down below. So like ship, your cars are having registry nameplate. Similarly, ship is also, this is name of the ship, this is port of registry, and this is flag of the ship. And this is how ship looks in from stern. Okay, so any ship you look, any ship you see, you will come to know the nationality of the ship where ship is registered. You will not come to know owner's nationality. You will not come to know the captain's nationality. Okay. This is now another example of Indian ship. And this is the stern part of the ship. How ship looks from the stern ship is in dry dock. Dry dock means carrying out maintenance. This is the propeller from where the ship is pushed to go through point one, point two. And this is a rudder, which is a steering, steering wheel is on top, but effect is happening here. And this is the Swarna Sindhu is the name of the ship. Port of registry is Mumbai and IMO number is so and so. So this is how it looks. And this is mandatory requirement that each ship must display its name, port of registry and IMO number at the back of the ship stern. Okay, so I think we are almost finishing coming to the end. This is how the certificate of registry looks like. Certificate of registry, which is given. Okay, so how it looks, let us see. This is the name of the ship, SCI Pawan. This is the official number given by the government of India under Merchant Shipping Act for the ship. This is registration is 53 of 2011, 19th October 2011, Mumbai. So in Mumbai, ship is registered and all the details of the ship and owner are given in the certificate of registry. Here, see, this is the name and address of the builder who has built the ship. Who is the builder of the ship? That is also given here. That is Cochin Shipyard Limited. And who is owner of the ship? That is also given here. Where is the owner's name? SCI Kochi, where built, and owner's name is also given. Okay. How many propellers? How many engine power? How much crew to operate? What type of engines? Like car registry, also, you have all this such type of details, but not to uh, so much extent. Okay, and who is the first captain on the ship who sailed with the ship? His name is also given here. And this is the owner's address. Okay, I had my view blocked because of this. Okay, this is the owner's address. This is the owner, the Shipping Corporation of India, Shipping House 245 Madam Kamarod. This is the official owner. And he says 
the 10 shares. So if this property can be divided into 10 shares, so that means when you are purchasing, you can purchase maybe two, three owners also can purchase and you can have shares. Like somebody may take 40%, somebody may take 30%, somebody may take another 30%. So three owners can have, and then these shares will be divided like that. So how much part? So these all 10 shares of this property are owned by Shipping Corporation of India. That is how it means. And suppose you are having, suppose four, two owners, five shares, five shares, then second owner's also name will be coming here. Okay, two owner's name will come. Okay, and this is Registrar of Indian Ships, Mumbai. And this is the stamp, Government of India stamp, and this is signature. And this is how they, and also here, see this tonnage is given, gross tonnage, 2067, registered tonnage 704. Why all such information is given? Because on this tonnage, on this tonnage is, whenever ship goes into port, all the charges are depending. That how much charges, means rental charges for the berth, rental charges for the pilotage, rental charges for the uh, using the port facility, those will be levied as per this not how much cargo, you may bring one ton of cargo, you may bring one lakh tons of cargo, but you will have to pay as per your capacity of the ship. Okay, so cross tonnage and net tonnage. Okay, so this is a sample of the uh, port of registry here, the call sign of the ship here, there is official a number which is given by government of India and also one more number is given internationally as IMO number. Okay. Any uh, brief significance of official number? Yes. So we have almost completed the registration of ships. I hope you have understood. Further, we are going to study about international registries and flag of convenience. Any questions? I will give you small time for question answer session. Any question, student? Yes, sir. Any any uh, brief significance of official number? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, sir, a small a brief significance. Any uh, any for official number? Why official number is given? Official number uh, is given. See, name is given by owner. So that freedom you have, that name you can give. And uh, official number is for all official purpose that uh, what is the number of the ship. Suppose tomorrow accident takes place, because name can keep on changing uh, when ship is sold, uh, ship is sold also, by ownership is changing. But official number, if it is going to be Indian ship on the official number will not change. And that no, is but IMO number the, is also not changing now. Which IMO one? number also doesn't. Yes, IMO Even number, IMO is number... For international purpose. One is international purpose, one is national purpose. So every every country has official number given to its uh, ships registered? It can be. I will not say it is mandatory requirement. Countries can decide whether they want to give official number or they want to give something else. So when the owner changes and if the owner wants to change the flag as well, so IMO number remains same, but official number changes, right? Yes, official number because it is going to different country. It has to be coming under different countries' regulations. Thank you, sir. Okay. So it is not uh, having big uh, like uh, importance, official number, but every ship, Indian ship is given official number. Uh, so sir, just, just yes, one please. more question. Yes, please. In case uh, the owner... Uh, doesn't want to change his flag. Does okay. the official number change? Uh, no, it will not change. If a okay. flag is going to be same, suppose an uh, Indian ship is owned by, sold by Indian to another Indian, going to be ah. in India, the official number will remain same. Okay. Yes, and sir. Sometimes we find that, that uh, the ships are arrested by the countries. Yes. <laughs> so okay. What are the reasons sir, and how anyone can arrest their ships of Countries which are belonging to different countries. Okay. Ships, see, ships are arrested means, suppose ship owner is due to you something, he has done some default, then you can go to court and arrest a ship, no? 
No, if the shift belongs from Singapore and presently she is she is at India. Okay. So can Indian government uh, arrest that shift? Yes, very much. Why not? But not for any other reason. There has to be some powerful reason. Like suppose Indian uh, Indian uh, citizen, uh, uh, he is owning to that ship something, or that sh ship has defaulted, and Indian uh, citizen has filed a case in court. Court can uh, arrest the ship. Court can so, stop the so, ship from so, sailing. So Indian government wants some uh, confirmation from this Singapore government, or they can do it from their side. No, directly. nothing. Nothing is required. It is just a temporary halting ship, no? Temporary, you are holding the ship back. So we, uh, uh, sometimes we can see that uh, maybe one for last two three months the ship remains at anchorage, mm -hmm. and the crew changes, but the ship remains at anchorage. It can it can happen like that because unless the matter is resolved, suppose court has given a arrest warrant. So unless matter is resolved, court will not release it, no. But crew can be changed because crew are human beings. Uh, they have to go home. They have, they are also they cannot be suffering with the owner. But in this case, yeah. but in this dispute of cargo also can uh, Indian government arrest that ship if there is some dispute regarding cargo? Means if the cargo is not as per BL or uh, the quantity is not discharged as per BL, so uh, can See, government or custom detain that ship? Uh, detention is different, arrest is different. Arrests are done by the court. So if you are able to convince the legal uh, system and if you are falling within that whatever uh, or Indian laws are there, then you can arrest. But detention is a different, like you are temporary, like a custom yeah. duty you don't pay. They will yeah. say, okay, we are not giving permission for ship to stay. My main point is, in case of uh, the dispute is regarding cargo, means the cargo is not exactly what is mentioned in the BS. Each case is uh, different and individual. So different, different things. So in detention, I will tell you. Detention, suppose RTO stops your uh, motorcycle if you are not yeah, having I, the papers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir I, that I, is I detention. That detention. Yes. And okay. arrest is if it is coming to court, legal uh, process, then it is. Okay. Quickly. Quickly, more questions. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, please. How many uh, years ship sail, sir? Pardon? Sir, how many years ship sail? How many years she, uh, sea service I have? I have... No, no, ship runs, ship, single ship runs, how many years? Okay, 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 okay. I will, we will just come to that. I was going to touch that subject because uh, I thought it's better that you know something about shipping a little more before we proceed. So in this break, I'm going to uh, take this. Okay, so if a question, sir, are, sir, uh, one last question, uh, sir. Um, sir, one last, sir, is this, uh, what is the difference between call sign and uh, official number? Is there any difference? A call sign used to be given uh, for convenience of earlier days communication. So call sign A, B, C, D like this or uh, numbers, it used to be there. So uh, see, saying ship's name, during wireless communication used to be a difficult and longer thing. So it used to cost huge amount of time and money. So call sign was given small thing. So with that call sign, they could transmit quickly signal and identify uh, themselves. So those era of uh, you know wireless communication. But nowadays you are able to send all attachments and uh, emails and uh, through satellite communication. So that uh, importance or uh, relevance of call sign is a little bit uh, reduced. Okay. But uh, sir, just just to uh, clarify, the call sign is still a very integral part of the vessel because uh, it yeah. is a basic yeah, yeah. the call sign that your vessel yeah. is identified even in your uh, GMDSs. Yes, because it is yeah, for yeah. communication only, no? Yeah, so all your distress signal and everything is so, based on a call so sign. Yes, it is there. That's what I said. No? It is required and it is there. But uh, overall, it has reduced its importance. Because you could have had, uh, uh, instead of call sign, you can have now IMO number also. For GMDSS, you can have IMO number. No problem. But call sign is already set in all the process and procedures. So uh, people are not changing it. They are just keeping it as traditional thing. Okay. So call sign remains same if owners owners change, right? Uh, no, 
call sign is different for different countries. Okay. Country is allotting call sign. Okay. Okay, somebody. Roxanne, you wanted to ask something. Right? So, so in that case, in that example that the student gave, where the nationality of the ship was Singapore, but was arrested in India. So, which law would uh, be governed? Singapore law would be governed at that time, or the Indian law would be governed? See, if crime is done as per your territory, in your territory, crime is done, you can arrest the ship irrespective okay. of which country it belongs. Because it's in your country. Sir, if the ship constructed in China, so it doesn't mean that the ship is registered or the port of registry belongs to China. Sir. No, I did not get initial part. Sir, suppose the ships, uh, ships are building in China. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, ship built in China, it need not be uh, registered in China and it need not have nationality as Chinese. It will be only as uh, built in China. Yes. But Singapore nationality would come into picture any which way? Then. No, no. Arrested in somewhere. No, no. Only the, only no. the ship nationality is only for no. their own uh, carrying no. of the business. Uh, answer is no. Okay. Okay. So please uh, mute yourself again and we will have break at 11.30 for another 10 minutes or so. So before that and before touching next subject of flag of convenience on the registry only, our open registry, I would like to give you and the students who are not so much familiar with the shipping or who are also familiar with the shipping, some important aspects or which uh, uh, facts you must remember throughout so that you can write it with yourself or you can write it in your uh, answers in any subject, whichever subject you are uh, going to write answers. Okay, first and foremost, shipping business, ships use very raw fuel, raw fuel. Just one grade above damber. Damber means tar. Tar what we use for making roads. Just before that one product is there. That is called heavy oil. So heavy oil is used for propulsion on ships. And it is cheapest. Heavy oil is cheaper. Cheaper than, much, much cheaper than your diesel oil or petrol or aviation fuel. So transportation of goods become cheaper. Plus, ship can move very large quantity of cargo over the seas. And that is also, it is making cheaper to transport large quantity of cargo with cheaper fuel. And large quantity of cargo, cheaper fuel, cheapest mode of transport, Shipping transports nearly 90% of the world's goods. So these are all uh, universal statements. They are not changing so fast and they may not change also for next many years. So 90% of the goods are transported by shipping. So importance of shipping is so much that without shipping, world may not be able to survive. And the Europeans who are leaders in shipping, they say, or Britishers who are leaders, pioneers in shipping, they say that if shipping stops, then 50% people will starve. If shipping stops, then 50% people will starve. Starving, starving means they will not have food, sufficient food, because it, there will be no transportation. And number two statement, they say, 50% people will freeze. So these statements they are making, both statements.
statements may not be very much true for India. India, even shipping stops, people will not have any difference than what they are starving today, or they will not freeze also. Because temporarily, temporarily they can come from Kashmir to Tamil Nadu, and then they can go back. So 50% people will starve, 50% people will freeze. That much importance they are giving to shipping. Okay. Number three statement, 90% of goods I have already made. Indian cargo, cargo which is exported or imported to India, more than 90% cargo is moved by foreign ships. This is another valid statement. More than 90% of the cargo is moved by foreign flagships. So you can see yourself how much scope is there for Indian people to expand shipping. Yes? Statements are recorded permanently in mind. Okay. So with this, we will move to our next topic. And next topic is flag of convenience or open registry. Okay. So let us see. And let us go to the PowerPoint presentation mode. Okay, flag of convenience and open registry is next topic. As we have understood the basic registration of ship, ship being international, shipping being international business, ship goes from one country to other country, operated by different, different people, owned by different people, registered in different country, carrying different country cargo, very, very complicated business. And to understand in this complicated business, I will share with you if you send me an uh, email, maybe a few of you, and then you, you can make group. The history of Indian, uh, Indian maritime history. That book is written by Captain H. Subramanyam, which gives you gist of shipping. Why shipping is so much complicated? And to we understand, Anji. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that book, uh, soft copy is there with me. I will share that soft, soft copy either with NMIS, they can uh, send it uh, to common email ID of yours. And you can read that book, read that book at least once. You don't have to have any pay, you are not going to appear or for any question on that book. But entire story of shipping, you will understand. And you will appreciate also the PNI club, classification society, flag of convenience, registration, different, different countries, nationalities, cargo, and so on and so forth. Okay. So that book I'm going to share with you, soft copy through NMIS. Okay. Now let us understand floating island concept. Many of the shipping people who are already working in shipping sector, they also will appreciate and understand this business more or this concept more clearly that why shipping is so much complicated and more what is this floating island concept. Okay. Here on the screen, I am showing Andaman Nicobar Islands. And on the Ban Nicobar Islands, as we say them islands, they are surrounded by sea. They are surrounded by sea, but they are not moving immobile. And if tomorrow there are going to be some, suppose 15 January, 15th August, 6, 26 January, or any other national event, which flag this country, this Andaman Nicobar has to hoist? is of course Indian flag because those are islands belonging to India. So islands nationality is India. Those islands cannot fly flag of 
बर्मा और मलेशिया और इंडोनेशिया बिकॉज आईलैंड आर बिलोंगिंग टू इंडिया इफ कोर्ट आर सेट अप इन पोर्ट ब्लेयर ऑलरेडी विच आर विच लॉ इज एप्लीकेबल इंडियन पिनल कोड इंडियन इनकम टैक्स रूल्स इंडियन क्रिमिनल लॉ ऑल इंडियन रूल्स विल बी एप्लीकेबल ऑन दी आईलैंड यस ऑन नो यस ओके ओके सो दैट मीन्स दिस इज इंडियन आईलैंड ओके नाउ लेट अस सी शिप ऑल्सो यू कैन कंसिडर इट एज अ फ्लोटिंग आईलैंड इट्स अ फ्लोटिंग आईलैंड but moving island so what is the flag of the ship is where ship is registered okay what is nationality of the ship if this flag if this ship is registered in india what is the nationality of the ship is india indian nationality which law will be applicable on the ship suppose tomorrow some uh, dispute or so or suppose some uh, of fights between the crew takes place which law will be applicable on ship is indian criminal law merchant shipping act that law will be applicable even let the ship be anywhere in the part of the world because this is indian island it is floating island and it is moving let it move no problem on the ship the operating crew may be of any nationality that is also no problem owner of the ship may be of any nationality no problem cargo which is loaded on the ship is any nationality no problem but it is floating island of india means whichever country ship is registered so similar way andaman nicobar and this indian ship both are same same any questions on understanding okay if silence means understood very well okay so in whichever country ship is registered that is her nationality and that is why we sir, say sir please explain this point again floating island concept okay andaman nicobar is island andaman nicobar is a fixed island this island belongs to india and andaman nicobar flies indian flag similarly ship suppose this ship which is shown here if it is registered in india ship's flag becomes indian and nationality of the ship becomes indian irrespective of who is owner who is crew who is captain of the ship which cargo ship is carrying understood so yes. nationality of the ship is depending where the ship is registered and after registry then we are saying this is flag of the ship flag means the nationality of the ship so in shipping this term is very much used as flag which flag any ship suppose uh, tomorrow some ship is coming xyz ship is coming in mumbai they will say oh which flag ship is then you will say oh this ship is marshall island marshall island flag this ship is hong kong flag this ship is panama flag this ship is indian flag so everything changes immediately as per the flag okay so let us proceed further under geneva convention on high seas 1958 this is the international convention we will study that what is convention and what is uh, other regulations and all little later but under geneva convention on high seas 1958 each state now this we are saying here state and this state means country each country shall fix the conditions for the granting of its nationality to the ships so government must be also agreeable that this is my floating island and they must have some conditions that this ship is going to be our own nationality okay for registration of ships in its territory and for right to flag its flag uh, right to fly its flag 
So when suppose tomorrow some foreigner comes to India and he says, I want to register ship in Mumbai, the government of India also must have some rules that this ship is going to be a Indian flag and give him the right to fly the flag. Okay. And such things are given as country is benefiting with revenue, huge revenue. Like your Choksi, you know Mehul Choksi? Yes, some of you must be remembering banks, bank frauds and Nirav Modi, Mehul Choksi, all this. So Mehul Choksi has taken a nationality of some different country. He has surrendered Indian nationality to government of India. He said, I don't want to be Indian. And he has taken different nationality. And now Indian laws are not applicable on him. He is enjoying the nationality of different country and India has to obtain permission that please give your citizen who was our citizen earlier who has committed fraud, please hand over to him. And that country is giving him protection and not handing over to, him, to India for further processing his cases. Why? Why that country will do that? Just for revenue. Appreciating the fact or not? Yes. yes or no? So there, every time country wants to suppose reject his uh, uh, bail, uh, 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 handing over application, they are going to tell him, okay, shell out some few million dollars. Then only we are going, we are going to give you protection here. Okay. The convention also states that there must be a genuine link between state and the ship, but this seems to be open to vague interpretation. So wherever laws are made, whether it is international or national, there are always some loopholes. So this international convention also says that person who is registering ship, he must have some linkage with that country some genuine link, the word is genuine link, but this is complied by doing something, by doing something and then something is revenue. Okay. And this is how different, different countries, people, different, different nationality, people, rich people, they purchase ship and register somewhere else other than their own country for obvious reason. Like same how Mehul Choksi has taken the citizenship of other country. Same way. Okay. So, okay. Let us see further. Flag of convenience is a system whereby a country allows ships to register there and flag the, fly the country's flag without real owner having a So, owner need not have, he may have one small office taken on rent. He can register one company there and he can register his ship there for whatever business uh, uh, benefits or edge over the other operators he gets or maybe rules, regulations are a little loose for that purpose. Owners prefer to register ships somewhere else where there is no genuine link, link or definite connection with that country of registration. Okay, and this is called as flag of convenience. Means you are taking a flag for the ship, you are taking a nationality for the ship at for convenience. So, same example I am giving of Mehul Choksi. It is for convenience, citizenship is taken of that country. Okay. So, we will proceed further. And I think we will take a break before we start this because I don't want to uh, have it halfway. 
So we will take a break now and we will join back at 1140. Okay. So thank you so much for patiently, patiently listening to me and uh, asking me questions for clarifications. So thank you so much. Join back at 1140. Uh, yes. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back for the second part or Good the morning, second sir. lecture, second lecture of today. And like this, you are going to have another ten lectures. This is this is going to be second ten lectures, or if possible, twelve lectures. Okay. To add to earlier flag of convenience or flag of the country floating island, to add some more information, see how it happens. The flag of the ship, when we say it is a floating island, suppose now Panama flagship comes to Mumbai. Okay. Owner may be Indian, maybe. Okay. Captain also may be on the ship Indian, but ship's flag is Panama. Ship comes to India in Mumbai and suppose ship comes alongside. So, jetty belongs to whom? Jetty means the where ship is tied up, Mumbai port. That belongs to whom? India. India. That is Indian, Indian uh, flag. Ship is having which flag? Panama. 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 So, Ship and the jetty, where ship has come alongside on the jetty, become two international borders. So this concept is very, very important to understand. So two international borders are there. And that is why you require ports, all ports to be treated as restricted area all ports are having central security including armed forces armed forces means armed or maybe well, not watchmen they are not watchmen maybe uh, cisf or maybe coast guard or maybe navy so all ports are protected like that because that is international border and all the dealing with the ship dealing with the ship will be with that consideration that this ship belongs to so and so country so people on the ship require stamping on their passport cargo is coming from some different country requires some different clearances security also is required to be different to international standard same like where you are having border, international borders, whatever security you have, whatever guarding you have, whatever uh, protection you must provide. So same protection is required to be provided where this floating island has come of some different country. Okay, this is temporary affair, but it happens. Okay, and that is why all ports are considered you require special passes, special permissions, special uh, uh, security to go on ship. It is not open to general public. And people who are coming from the ship, whatever cargo is coming by the ship, has to be totally tallied what comes in and what goes out. The people who are coming in, all the people must leave the country because they are coming from foreign, foreign island. They are leaving in foreign island. And even suppose Indian people are there on the ship, when they come in, they are treated same as airport would treat them. And on airport, like you will have to go through immigration, you will have to go through stamping of your passport, inward, outward. So same procedure is followed even in ports. And that is how this because of flag of uh, your floating island concept. Okay. So this point, I wanted to <clears throat> make it clear about floating island. One more point also uh, was there in my mind to tell you, but uh, 
I am not able to recollect now that point. Anyway, we will proceed with our next uh, flag of convenience. Comparison. Comparison between Indian ship owner and foreign ship owner, foreign owner, flag of convenience and Indian flag just to, just to give you information to understand better why this flag of convenience, why ships are registered somewhere else, okay, from your original nationality. Let us take point by point and let us compare and then you will answer yourself. Oh, I did not give the answer, okay. Suppose Indian ship owner has purchased a ship of 100 crore value and he brings ship to India for registration. So this column is for Indian registration I am putting and same Indian person takes a ship and registers to some other country of his choice wherever he feels that business I can do better. So he registers it here. So this will be coming, falling here. What are the compliances? So let us see in India when he comes, he has to register prior registration. He has to pay custom duty. He has to pay registration fee stamp duty, which may be coming to 10%. Maybe. I'm not saying it is 10%. It may be 11%. It may be 9 point something. It may be anything. But 10% for our easy calculations. So 10% suppose duty he has to pay. Ship's cost is 100 crore. What is his now capex? Capital expenses are how much now to start the business? Already 100 plus 10. 1.10. Now, yes, 110. Now suppose some foreign country tells me that why you want to register your ship in India, please come here. I will charge on the 1% duty taxes everything. You pay here to me and I will give you same registration with my nationality. So he, gave, he goes to some country who offers and his second ship he registers somewhere, some other country like Barbados. Barbados means which country we are uh, explaining about uh, Mehul Choksi, like that. So he goes to suppose some country like Panama and they tell him, it is bargain. They tell him, okay, 1% or he says, no, no, 1% is too much. Can you give me in half percent? Can you give me in 0.6%? Yes. If you are negotiation power is uh, uh, your expert, you can negotiate whatever you want. Okay. So less, less duty and fees, say 1% about. So Indian, my Indian ship has already cost is 110 crore. Here cost is 101 crore, 9 crore. I have straight away saved here. Okay. Number two point, lengthy and slow process. You go to government office for registration of ships. Several days also, you may not find the desk where you have to register. Possibility. I'm just saying possibility. It is true or not that you have to judge yourself. Okay. And here procedures are easy and fast. These people may come to your house. They may come to your country to visit you and they will give you all the documentation, all the forms they will fill up. They will just say, okay, sign here, sir, please sign here. That's all. And within few hours, the registration is done. So process is easy and fast. After doing business for one year, there are going to be annual taxes and income taxes. The government of it, government is going to ask you of country, whichever country. And here they will say, okay, we don't want to ask you what business you have done, how much income you have earned, how much profits you have earned. Just pay lump sum maybe $50,000 to us and finish up with that. But whereas countries like India, what they will say, what business you have done? Suppose you say that due to pandemic, I could not do my business. I My business is at loss. So authorities, what they will say, 
that show your books, books of accounts. We want to check, we want to do audit. So unnecessary harassment and unnecessary trouble. So other country is telling that, okay, you have done profit or loss, I, I don't care for that. You pay me 50,000, 25,000, $10,000 and finish up with the matter. Okay, so this is number three. Delayed services, any services during the process you require, you will have delayed processes. And here, the services, you just send one email to them and they will reply immediately because they want business. Return email will come by solving your problem, okay? Here, Indian crew is must. You have to man ships with Indian crew. And this ship, I can man with any crew from the world. Any crew. Why I'm saying any crew and Indian crew? And you must be thinking, why not Indian person, Indian ship? You have to provide jobs to Indians. Yes, it is true. But when you come to international business and when you compare cost and effectiveness, you may find some other crew is better working and less cost. Which benefit you can take here? Less salary, more work, more efficient. So you are, you are having freedom to do that. Here you have no freedom. <clears throat> With the Indian crew manning, you have to man your ships more than 25 people, 30 people, 34 people. It is compulsion on you that you have to take so many people because we have so much population, you must generate employment, you must employ so many people. Whereas if you take crew from any other country, the minimum number may be just 20, 17, 18, 21, 22, as per your choice, okay? Here, as people are more on the ship, Indian people, less productivity on ship. Here, more productivity because you have taken crew from different country. They are going to save their job. They are going to do work. It's same example, like people outside India, they work much better because they are scared of their job. And in India, same people, they do not produce results. So same way here also, okay? And lengthy process of resolving issues. Any issue is there with the ship or business. They are having lengthy process. And here issues will be really resolved faster. Okay? So excuse now, me, sir. I want to, sir, excuse me, sir. I want to ask one question. Okay. Sir, you have uh, said that it is a lengthy and slow process procedure, delayed services. But uh, recently, uh, Ministry of Shipping as well as Government of India has announced that we are now introducing single window system so that we can uh, resolve out all these uh, shipping related trades as well as all these processes within a uh, uh, couple of days only. And it must be uh, completed within uh, def a defined time zone. So, can you, sir, uh, speak some words related to single window system or uh, our government is uh, creating some, uh, uh, some, some highly, uh, something uh, in order to create, uh, generate more jobs? Yes, I, want yes, to... I, I, I agree to that single window system, doing faster, giving commitment, yeah. time bound commitment by government. Yeah. But how much yeah. effective that one has to judge himself by taking yeah. experience. And still, other people will uh, give more faster service because they want to attract your ship for registration. Because without uh, a businessman having any connection with that country, they are going to generate revenue. Yeah. Correct, no? Ah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And certain things, the countries cannot uh, wave off. The countries but which sir, are having some uh, good rules and regulation, they cannot wave off those things. Okay. And, and apart, please, yes, please. And up, apart from this, sir, uh, government is uh, forcing uh, forcing out and changing its trends from manual work uh, to digital 
uh, tra transformation also. No, no, that, like, is uh, all, that is all improvements are required to be done and still yeah. they are far away from international standards. Yes, yeah. yeah, government has issued circulars, but uh, when you go on ground reality, there is nothing yes. happening. Yes, and they are far, and far, 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 far means far, that word far is not ending. Mm -hmm. It is far it away is. from international standards. If you happen to means, go out, you will realize that. And it means, so sir, uh, uh, government of India, when uh, convert all these shipping, uh, uh, government shipping company like Shipping Corporation of India, mm -hmm. uh, Cochin Shipyard Limited, when they convert it into private sector or they when they, they will hand over all these ports as well as all these Indian company in order to make more responsive, then uh, they can meet some standard, I mm -hmm. think. Okay. Okay, okay, that is not our topic. There is a big discussion on this topic. Anyway, so I have taken this India comparison just because we are from India, but any other country also the same comparison, more or less same comparison remains than the convenience. Convenience people are taking one age above the other country. Okay, they find out, they search for uh, what is the procedure and how ship owner can be put at ease that they find out. Okay, so let us go further. Now you tell me, number is Indian flagship and this foreign flagship, two ships are going for same cargo, same freight, same charter rate, who will make profit more? Obviously, sir, foreign, foreign, foreign owner. Foreign owner. Foreign without owner, even, obviously. Yes, without even a paper and pencil in your hand, you are saying that it is foreign owner who is going to. So, you, Indian ships are not at par with foreign owners. They are not having level playing field with foreign owners. So, how shipping from India will improve and how that statement will change of 90%, more than 90% cargo is carried by foreign flagships. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, apart from this, sir, uh, can we say that as India is considered as a consumer country, so uh, government is taking some age, like uh, we are uh, the second most populous country and we are the, uh, the world's biggest market in terms of consumer. So they can they they are taking some advantage in order to strengthen their rules so that uh, because government know that although anyway, uh, they have to invest in our uh, consumer market now. Okay, that is a separate topic altogether. So let us not spend our time on that. But uh, we have realized more or less how is the uh, system of this flag of convenience. Okay, now flag of convenience or open registry or flag of necessity. This is known by three names, flag of convenience, FOC, or open registry or flag of necessity as they are usually called in order to give us semblance of respectability to the ships have today become one of the most serious problem in international maritime transport. Okay, so this is a statement means such ships are posing threat or they are posing danger to the world. Okay, danger to business or international maritime transport sector. Okay, why, how, we are going to discuss. Many countries tend to allow and encourage the registration of foreign-owned ships. So, many small, small countries who are not having any connection, who are not having any cargo for export import, still they will attract people to register ships by giving them so many facilities and give them so many facilities so that they earn more profit and country also benefits as revenue, okay? This all started, this flag of convenience started in 1920. So already about 100 years back, okay? And it widespread only after Liberia joined the group of flag of convenience from 1940, okay? So after 1940, Second World War, around that time, this started increasing this registration of ships outside your own country. Okay. Let us see. By transfer, transferring the ship from genuine national register to FOC register, an owner of owner runs away from taxation. 
safety regulations and most important from trade union organization so unions labor unions taxation of the country and regulations safety regulations where they can be given <coughs> little uh, less uh, 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 less uh, compliance is okay with flag of convenience countries okay so that is why owners are also getting attracted towards that and this is a source of revenue for the countries which are attracting ship owners to register their ships as a income for the country okay so let us see advantages what are advantages to a owner ship owner when he registers his ship as a flag of convenience low taxation that we have seen already flexibility to operate with multinational crew which reduction of cost reduction of cost and more effective crew on ship okay greater op operational freedom so they are having more freedom to operate without much hurdles okay then procedure for amendment or change in ownership very fast so suppose you want to sell the ship you want to sell the ship to second owner it is very fast overnight you can do it okay then fewer government impose regulations or restrictions these countries will not impose which are uh, restrictions to the ship owner which are hurdles for his business they will resolve your hurdles they will solve your hurdles so that you do quick business no strong trade unions to obstacle ship owners so strong trade unions are so like suppose indian owned ship indian crew on ship indian officers on ship all indian uh, uh, labor unions will be having control so one is large number of crew they will not be performing better and they will be every time coming out with rules and regulation okay then convenient avenue for countries to raise foreign currency so like countries like panama or singapore or marshall island they can earn they can get lot of foreign exchange through such registration of ships then easy procedure for registration is the procedure me suppose that country's representative is going to come to your house and give you registration by doing nothing just by paying fees then why not so it is so much easy okay so these are advantages now let us see what are the disadvantages of having such type of thing so disadvantages are no effective machinery to enforce international safety regulation this is okay it will difficult for understanding okay we will come to this little later okay then okay this is very easy to understand the whatever his uh, accident history or marine casualty if you analyze then flag of convenient ships are having more record of accidents marine accidents the involvement of the ships with flag of convenience is more that data speaks it is not some statement made by somebody it is data speaks okay then investigation carried out by foc are little just to complete the covid batch we now just yes okay so investigation by a flag of convenience countries not thorough and rigorous because see what happens suppose accident has taken place and they want to do investigation just because international community uh, uh, international uh, community is forcing them to have a, a, uh, investigations so those investigations will be just for uh, paper paper sake they will not be going to root, root cause because why because ship actually it is not belonging to that country actually crew is not belonging to that country cargo is not belonging to that country business is not belonging to that country it is only that registration and annual fees what is paying that's all so suppose tomorrow on a ship suppose indian crew is there and suppose somebody goes missing or somebody dies 
is that government going to spend a lot of time and a lot of money on this for investigation? Answer is no. So such things, investigations are not rigorous. But suppose on an Indian ship, suppose one crew dies on ship, the ship will be here in port for maybe eight, 10 days for investigation and police and uh, governmental agencies visiting and filing cases. That will not happen with lack of convenience. Okay. Difficulty in recovery, recovering claims. So insurance companies also will say, you have registered your ship to flag of convenience for business. Accident record as it is, is more of those ships. So insurance company also will say that I will not pay the claims because you are just having money, money making uh, in your mind, maximum profit making in your mind. So I will not uh, give settle your claims in, instead in case you are having some recovery claims. So those claims also will be taking longer time, okay? Or sometimes no also. <clears throat> then prone to frequent inspections at various ports. So when you say this casualty record is high of such uh, ships, and suppose tomorrow, suppose casualty record, suppose Panama ships are flag of convenience, and government of India thinks that why such ships should come and go easily from India, they can keep on inspecting the ships for compliance to international standards, knowing fully well that the ships can be making accident. So developed countries will keep on having inspections on these ships, so various inspections, okay, for international compliance, which, which the government where the ship is registered, they should have done it, but they will not be doing it because they are not having such machinery with them. So, so much machinery and they are not spending so much money on them. Okay. So that's why frequent inspections. Multinational crew difficulty to communicate. Multinational crew means such people, they may say, okay, we will have two Europeans to control people or down below. Then maybe officers we will have who are English speaking Indian officers. And maybe few people from Bangladesh, few people from Sri Lanka, few people from maybe Philippines and China or Russia. So there may be easily six, seven nationality people on board. And during emergency, during crisis, they may not be able to communicate with each other properly. Okay, language difficulty. They are working together, but there is a language difficulty. No support from governments for subsidies or finances. So suppose I purchase a ship being Indian and I register it outside India, the government of India, suppose they are paying maybe subsidy or maybe a low interest loan, that may will not be available to me. Because if I'm not registering my ship here, why they should? So those things, the people, ship owner will lose. Okay. And here, can you read here this one? This if somebody can read, I'm not able to because my low safety uh, standards. Low, low safety, safety standards. standards. Because casualty accident data is more, so low, low safety standards. Okay. So all these things are happening on these ships, and that is a concern to international shipping. So you are earning profits. At the same time, you are posing danger for the people, for environment, and for the cargo. Okay, so these are advantages and disadvantages of the <coughs> flag of convenience. Okay, here this wheel shows you Panama where highest number of ships in the world are registered as flag of convenience or open registry. Then you are having Panama, Malta, St. Vincent Island, Liberia, Cyprus, France, and these various colors are showing. This is available on net also. You can also get that. Okay. And flag of convenience in 2009, accounting for almost 55% of the entire world split. So more than 50% ships are registered at some different places where at the convenience of the ship owners to earn more profit. Okay. 
and these are the numbers giving 8052 registered in Panama, Singapore 3574, 3277, Marshall Island 3244, and Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong, how much? Let me see, Hong Kong 2594. Okay. Then, as of January 2018, there were 53,732 ships in the world's merchant fleet. So, how many ships are there trading in the world? You can say about more than 50,000. Okay, this is what is information available, uh, updated information. Okay, and I have given the source also from where this information is taken. Okay, so let us see further. I wanted to ask a question. Yes, please. Uh, sir, you, you mentioned here that FOCs and I mean other registries and uh, you mentioned this is top 11. So uh, th there are many more than this, right? So yes. How, yes. Is, how is it decided that uh, this is flag of convenience? I mean, how, who uh, gives this term to a particular country? Uh, it is not given term to a particular country when owner, owner's nationality is somewhere else and he is registering his ship to some other country, then it becomes flag of convenience, no open okay. registry, like that, okay? So, and these are the countries. Sir, and and apart are, from this, sir, sir, apart from this, uh, it may lead some of the uh, mishappening to that other country, because, sir, the ship owner as well as ship can take advantage of all these things. Yes, the, that the, is happening, no? Yes, yes, yes. It yeah. is, it is. Yeah. But finally, what businessmen's, uh, uh, businessmen's, what is aim of businessmen? To earn money by hook or yeah. crook. Okay. They are not worried about what is happening. Just because they, somebody they're... will catch, just because somebody will catch them, that's why they comply with the rules. It is not uh, of their own choice they are complying with the rules. Like most but of the they... people do. But sir, there should be a control now nah, because it's like uh, uh, there is a worldwide control over uh, yes, yes, by yes. United Nations. Yes, so, yes, it is. It is there. It is there. Yes. But finally, finally, business takes over everything. Okay, the control is also there. That we are going to study, and you will understand. And okay. sir, this one of the advantages is greater operational freedom. Mm. Sir, how can we say that, sir? Means, can you give some examples that FOC has greater operational freedom and what is the meaning of, sir, operational freedom, sir, here? Operational freedom means, suppose, uh, okay, mm, operational freedom. Suppose you have annual inspection due of the ship. Okay. Sir. And suppose annual inspection going to take two days or three days. Okay. okay. Annual inspection of the ship is going to take suppose three days. And suppose flag of convenience person says that I will finish within few hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. And wherever sh sh your ship will go, I will arrange. So they will appoint somebody to go on ship and uh, do the paperwork. And he will say, okay, the inspection is over. Mm -hmm. Like ships calling from um, foreign countries, India, and sometimes the auditors came from outside and sometimes the auditor came from India, sir. Mm, yes. Sometimes some person will say, okay, I will charge you $500. I will go on ship and give you a report. So report only matters, no? Yes. Excuse but me, suppose, suppose if you tell government of India or government of that particular country, please uh, inspect the ship. They will say, okay, keep your ship two days, three days here, and we cannot send to any nook and corner of the uh, world uh, for inspection. So whenever ship will come to India, we will inspect. So is it not operational freedom? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Sir? Yeah. Sir, uh, I want to ask one question. That you, uh, Sir, in order to leverage out the 100% advantage of FOC, it mm. means that, sir, most of the, out of 53,000 ships, all most of the ships should be uh, take registration and all these uh, leverage from all these small country now nah? why they will have to pay some you, uh, you did hefty not, amount you did, of tax you did not under so you did not uh, pay attention to my few sentences first yeah. countries do not allow countries do not give you permission to go out and register your ships like india 
India, you are not having freedom. If you are Indian citizen, you have to register ship only in India. But sir, I think now India government has allowed. Just, no, no. just hold on, hold on, hold on. Just hold on. Batao, we are coming to that. Okay. So this is how the ships uh, tonnage is. Panama is registering twenty two percent, Marshall Island eight point six, and uh, Malta four point four. These are what is available statistics on net, which is a uh, you know recorded uh, information. Okay. Now what you people are saying, I will. Uh, throw some light on that that government of india was not allowing indian people to register ship outside india and have level playing field with foreign ship owners yeah. but from 2015 they said okay indian people also can register their ships outside india but with condition that suppose i am ship owner indian ship owner i have five ships i can register my sixth ship wherever i want maybe in padama maybe malta wherever i want i can government of india has given that permission this government which present government running the country they have given that appreciating the fact that owners are not having level playing field but condition is you should have you should maintain the same tonnage what you have on that date so suppose i had five ships i must maintain five ships not that i purchase new ship register outside and i sail one ship from here if you are sailing one ship from here you have to register new ship in india on the day so you must maintain the tonnage and your foreign registered tonnage should never be exceeding indian tonnage indian tonnage means your own tonnage sir here tonnage refers to ships Yes, ships. Mm -hmm. And uh, sir, if, sir, what if, can if, if any Indian has five ships, means he has to maintain the registry of that five ships in India only. Not and that if, five ships. He has to maintain that number, register tonnage, mm -hmm. yeah. capacity of the ships. And sir, what uh, can you say if the particular ship owner can uh, can have more than five country passport, or uh, if uh, uh, then uh, in on. Uh, in on that condition, can he has uh, can he he has a uh, permission to take uh, FOC from all those other uh, country? No, five country passport is not possible. You can you can have only one citizenship wherever you want to take. You cannot have five six passports with you. And sir, only India, India has given that facility to have second passport because you are of Indian origin, but otherwise no. And sir. And sir, but that only visa is possible. Yes, yes. Sir, if India any Indian person who do not have any ship and suppose he purchased one ship and that particular ship can he registered outside from outside the country? Yes, allowed. If he is having one ship here, second ship he can register outside, but that ship has to be smaller than this ship because tonnage should not exceed. Tonnage means NRT, sir, or GRT. So, Joe, bhi hai, wo, that we have to see the rules. That you don't yeah. have to worry unless you want to be ship owner. Why, sir? Why? What is the uh, main objective of, of uh, all the making all these tedious rules? I don't think uh, why government of India is uh, making all these complicated rules in order to restrict out uh, the maximum <laughs> ship ship owners. <laughs> It is not only ship owner. Everywhere rules are same. If they allow everybody to go out and register, not a single ship will in India. All ships will go out and they will register outside and come. Yes, and there is no profit for Indians if they, ah, so, all of them will go out. Yes. So how this is the only have... reason they are restricting. Yes. Uh, so, for but... Indian, for Indian, for registering the ship outside. Uh, so as per FOC. They, uh, they, it is not necessary to have any connection with that foreign country, so, right? Yes. Uh, means so he does not have any office in that foreign country or any a passport or ID proof. Oh, no, 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 no. That they are fulfilling that requirement of genuine link. They are fulfilling somehow. So they may be sending their one relative, making him stay there, making him as a citizen. That how whatever is required, you have to do it. Like earlier days, people used to register cars in Diu Daman or in MP and bring it to Mumbai. 
because they were taxation. Why so much? Just few years back, Mumbai people used to register cars in New Bombay because New Bombay did not have Octra. And just to save, people will have, okay, they will show some maybe ration card, maybe some gas card, maybe some telephone connection, something they will show and they will take it. Anyway, uh, let us uh, close that topic there only. Nowadays, see now what happens, countries which have given total freedom to people to go and register outside, like European countries. So they are giving now second registry, like Indian Indian government has is giving to Indian origin people, like second registry, second passport. They are having one uh, scheme where whereby they don't have to stand in queue for visas and all. So second registries have come up and European countries are asking their ship owners. They say, okay, you register ship outside uh, so-and-so our country, but do registration here also. So they have data that how many ships are registered outside. They want to attract the ship, uh, businessmen to their own country by giving them some maybe some benefits and asking them to register. So at least data is available with them that how many citizens are owning how much property outside. So governments can have various uh, views. And so second registers have started in Europe, like uh, Norwegian International Ship Register, Denmark Inter International Ship Register. So these are examples who are asking their ship owners that, okay, you have flag of convenience, but register in our country only and giving them some benefit maybe tax benefit or maybe cargo booking or maybe having some, uh, you know, uh, benefit for uh, business, whatever. Okay. They have, you have to attract businessmen. Then only he will come to your country. Okay. But so the, question uh, answers are already we are doing simultaneously. With, yes, sir. But uh, so it, what it, are the uh, um, advantages of uh, the second registration? Like why do we need to do second registration? Just now I said, uh, if people who are staying outside India, NRI, and they have left Indian citizenship, and when they come to India, they have to stand in the queue for visa as a foreigner. So government of India is saying, we respect that you were original Indian uh, origin person. So we are giving you facility, you have second passport, and you visit India anytime. So that is facility you are providing to your people, no? So similarly, facility to your own country businessman, you are saying, and they are getting data, no, that how many ships registered outside which are owning to our country actually. So such data governments are interested to collect. Okay. Uh, so, and sir, this uh, the owner have to pay tax to the both registries, even it is minimum. Uh, 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 yes, uh, sometimes without tax also they may say that they will say we will do free. Please register okay. here. So what is the benefit of second registration? I told you the benefit. Government wants to collect data. Government wants okay. to collect uh, your own people. You want to give them facility something. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct, na? okay. So everything, government also sees something out of that. No? It is not just for sake of uh, things are given, sake of something. It is... Okay. Then this topic I will just touch upon. Next topic. Okay. That is ITF. Earlier we had one complete lesson on ITF. International Transport Workers Federation. And this happens to be an international uh, labor union federation, trade federation, uh, transport workers federation. Okay. So this is like a union only and international nature. Okay. So let us see. And this uh, became little more alert and powerful or more uh, representative in shipping because of flag of convenience. When owner is of different country, ship is registered somewhere else, ship is operated by multinational crew, then suppose crew who is not going to their own country. And suppose this owner exploits the crew, like working conditions or promising one salary and not paying that salary, not uh, providing them proper food. So all these things 
suppose owner is doing so where this crew will complain what will happen to them so this international transport workers federation they said ships also we have to see where flag of convenience is there and we have to go and check the ships also okay so let us study a little bit about, about international transport workers federation and in this full form short form w is missing international transport workers federation w is missing that you must remember that okay many of the people in shipping they know itf they will be speaking many times itf 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 but full form very few will be able to tell you many people will say international trade federation also okay so international transport workers federation okay this federation was founded with respect for human and trade union okay just a minute i will put it on presentation mode again because then i can have the pointer okay in 1896 by group of of europeans and us trade unionist so us and europe their trade union people they founded this itf international transport workers federation now when we say transport workers federation first of all you must know what are this transport industries so transport industries kon kon hai because this is we are saying shipping but this is federation is of international transport workers and transport industries are road road rail air aviation uh, air water yes air and water so four main transport um, uh, means of transport are there which are the where people work in different different and out of that now let us see road suppose road who are the people working on the road road transportation is truck drivers cleaners and maybe labor who are going along with the truck or loading discharging so these are the transport workers on the road industry railway industry again same the railway operators and labor and who are taking care of cargo so those are the rail workers signal man or station people then you have aviation industry so aviation industry also where cargo transportation transportation takes place by fly, flights or by aeroplanes there also people who are working those are those workers and shipping so out of that road is not international uh, nature railway is also not international nature means everywhere railway doesn't go indian railways don't carry cargo to uh, nepal bangladesh and uh, pakistan or any other country even road trucks are also not going to international uh, so much so those two industries are domestic industries mostly but sir sir in terms of the road transportation india is also transporting uh, its goods from india to bangladesh india to nepal I, india to bhutan i'm i am i am just saying just hold on no india is transporting means they are sending by export and those countries don't have that's why we are sending our trucks there but international anywhere from india truck doesn't go to europe no or it it, it doesn't but sir it is a it is a cross border border uh, scenario na no, cross border is... scenario that is a uh, special arrangements it is not as a uniform arrangement it is a special arrangement made made with the countries it is not uni uniform international business okay so but shipping is not so shipping is truly international and flights also truly international so out of these four industries two industries are international but this trade union is for all the workers railway workers aviation workers road workers as well as shipping workers okay dominated in europe till world war 2 and later increase in developing countries so after world war 2 till that time it was only limited to us and europe this trade union and then it spread all over the world okay 
ITF claims these rights are regularly violated, these rights of the labor are regularly violated as def defender of these rights, it finds itself in conflict with employees and governments. Okay, so that's why labor is exploited everywhere. That's what ITF says, and which is true. And that's why they keep on going wherever labor is exploited at international transport workers, basically. Okay, its campaign against FOC is the most visible part of the conflict. So flag of convenience, this labor is exploited and ITF people board the ships whenever ships come in port. Okay. Okay. International Transport Worker Federation. Okay. It promotes and respect trade unions and human rights, peace and social justice. Okay. This we will not, uh, this you can read later because we don't have so much time to spend on this uh, ITF. But who are the people now? Okay, see here now, brings together the transport workers trade union from most part of the world, provides strength and solidarity. Okay, fishermen can be member, fishermen unions can be member of ITF, truck drivers, yes, civil aviation, dock workers, railway, urban transport, tourism, Inland navigation and seamen, all these unions can be worker uh, members of the ITF. So how this works, see now, ITF is international body. Suppose Indian Seafarers Union, they can take membership of ITF. So each Indian seamen need not be member of ITF. But Indian Seamen's Union has taken membership of ITF so in turn, Indian seamen is also protected by ITF. Understanding? Okay. Now, Indian Railway, Indian Railway Unions, Mazdoor Union, they can be also a member of ITF. So now you will say railway, if it is not international, why they should be member of ITF? To exchange, exchange the uh, views, exchange the dealings, exchange the uh, whatever uh, cases against trade union or with workers uh, where uh, trade unions have won and how compensation was given just to exchange the views and news these unions are and how it affects. See, now tomorrow, suppose one ship in Mumbai and suppose you ITF calls or any other... Any, any other union calls for a strike. Oh, I see, like, I go this way. <laughs> Just mute yourself. Okay. So suppose a, a ship in Mumbai and they call a strike. Not ship, ship's crew. Suppose IT. ITF has called Please a strike. Please uh, check with your mics. Please disturbing the class. So all other unions also will support that strike. Which all unions? The fishermen union, truck drivers, truck drivers who are going into port, they will say, okay, we will not also deliver the cargo to the ship because it is called by ITF. Okay. Then civil aviation, dockers, dock workers also, they will say, okay, we support the strike. So likewise, the unions will support each other to make it more strong, to give solidarity. Okay, so that is how ITF. The principles of ITF is based on UN Declaration of Human Rights and Rights of Freedom of Association laid down by International Labor Organization, ILO. Okay, and ILO has came out with a Maritime Labor Convention for the seafarers, Maritime Labor Convention for the seafarers, okay? And it is come, came out in 2006, and it has come into force from 2013, August 2013, it came into force, Maritime Labor Convention, okay? So that is an introduction to ITF. Now, ITF, when it goes on ship to resolve some issues about crew, they will go and ask, that whether you are getting your salary, whether you are getting food, whether you are not working excess, whatever. And crew will express with them and then they will take up with the owner and they will hold up the ship. 
hold up the ship and ask for compensation. And suppose this is happens with all the most of the unions, this will happen. The unions will take extract money from the owner and pay to the, its member, and some money will be kept with the unions also, some percentage. Okay, so that also happens. Okay, so ITF now, suppose ITF is boarding all the suppose Panama registered ships and owners are getting troubled because of that. So owner went and may have, uh, met the ITF people and they said, why you are troubling every time? What do you expect out of me that I should do this, 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 you give me, please. And I will do that. And once it is done, then the ITF will issue something called as blue certificate to the ship. That means the ship, although it is registered under Panama, ship has complied with most of the things. Okay. And ITF people need not go or they will go on board. They will say, oh, you have blue certificate. Okay. We will go out. We will walk out because ITF has given you the uh, like a blanket permission to operate without any hindrance. Okay. So ITF has... Uh, Membership 653 trade unions around the world. This, uh, of course, must be increasing uh, every year by year. And in 153 different countries and represent huge number of labor associated with transport industry. Okay. And here we are having pride to say that Mr. Abdul Ghani Sarang from National Union of Seafarers India is elected as an executive member of ITF. So one Indian person is there in ITF board, okay, who is from UC. Okay. So with this, we are coming to the topic of this ITF. This is coming under one international uh, organization. Sometimes you get uh, for five marks to write on this. Earlier, we had even 20 mass questions used to come on ITF, but ITF now as a separate lesson we don't have from 2019 onwards. So it's lost its uh, importance in this subject. So uh, that much of the information I can provide. We can start a new topic till as we are having time, further time. So let us see. As we are taking question answer session, along with our lecture. So let us go to different topic, which is, which one you want to take, you can tell me, we can go to that topic or I will start with IMO, International Maritime Organization. So as we mentioned about United Nations, United Nations organization is organization of all the countries, of all the countries in the world. United Nations work for betterment of tomorrow of all the human beings and the earth, environment as well as human beings. So when you are taking care of environment, you have to take care of all the creatures on the earth including atmosphere, environment, global warming, pandemic, corona, all such type of things they have to deal, including poverty, education, food for all, employment for all, development for all, all facilities for all, everything United Nations has to work. And they are working. So, Hello. yes, please. So this means, can I say this? Although accuracy rules are very lousy, compared with human rights and one, still there are other statutory bodies like IAM who protects their interests. No, uh, your speech was not clear. I mean, I, I was saying that although FOC rules are lousy, when come when you know when we think from the point of view of human rights environment, still mm -hmm. there are other statutory bodies like ITF and IAM who protects their rights. Anybody uh, who can hear his question better? I am not able to get fully. It is cracking, sir. Ah, yes. I'll, I'll type it. I'll type it. Please. Okay. 
Okay, at the end we will. Okay, I will at the end. I got something, some gist of your question that why other countries are not uh, taking uh, this as a means uh, uh, as a uh, stopping to this FOC. Is that correct? You what you want to say? No, sir. No, sir. I'll type it to you, sir. You can you can have it and and and. Okay, but if I uh, tell you, okay. Now terrorist approval approval of terrorist. If person has done terrorist activity, and suppose one country blocks it every time to name him name him as terrorist, so how they can block it? So it is same. How some country can say that you cannot register your ship outside when you are fulfilling that country's requirement? So similar. So nobody nobody can stop. See, finally, money and business takes over all the priorities. That time and again, you are also saying in India, the money speaks everywhere. Okay. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> sir, apart see. from sir, apart from this, uh, I have one question. Sir, you have rightly said that the main objective of uh, all the trade union is to uh, to save the human uh, rights of all our workers. But sir, yes. many a time, uh, many a time, sir. Uh, uh, I have seen that uh, uh, all these most of the trade unions are taking a wrong advantage of all these rights because, sir, many a time we have seen that um, uh, in India also many of the trade unions are taking more and more money from company in the name of uh, uh, welfare of all their workers. But most of the time uh, they do not uh, divide uh, all this money to uh, for uh, the real welfare of all these workers. So, sir, uh, I want to ask that uh, why uh, all these uh, uh, organizations have to uh, have to follow all these trade unions rules as well as demand, as they are not uh, fulfilling their responsibility for the welfare of their workers also. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. I just uh, heard your statement. So, yeah. number one, I will say that uh, for this uh, trade unions and all this and ITF, shipping yeah. is no exception. Shipping yeah. also is uh, same to other industry also, other industry yeah. like oh, this is international. And number two statement I will make, if you don't want, try and see, don't follow their whatever this thing, don't uh, listen to them, don't follow, and you will not be able to do the business. But, the government, but, uh, government will not be able to give you any protection whatsoever. Okay. So that is the scenario all over the world. See, weaker person gets exploited all over the world. But sir, many a times they pay, they may take some political but, in, uh, influence. But you cannot do anything. Finally, it's money. Finally, it's money, political or unions or labor. Finally, it is money and weaker section has to suffer. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so what we were discussing is United Nations organization and good environment without damaging environment. And United Nations as one body they cannot be having one office and looking after everything. So they are having branches. They are having arms. And one such arm is IMO, International Maritime Organization, looks after only Merchant Navy. So when I say now this Merchant Navy, then you must be immediately having clear idea about Merchant Navy and Defense Navy. Defense Navy got nothing to do with this IMO thing. Defense Navy is not coming under any rules and regulation of Merchant Shipping Act. Defense Navy is totally different. Defense Navy is for protection of the country. Defense Navy is domestic. Defense Navy is not carrying cargo and Merchant Navy. And what course you are going to do with this Shipping management is only about Merchant Navy. And Merchant Navy is for transportation of goods. Okay. And International Maritime Organization is working towards betterment of transportation of goods on behalf of United Nations. Okay. Similarly, ILO, International Labor Organization, as I said, 
they are also working for labor's betterment and that is how they have done the international maritime labor convention 2006 for the seafarers okay this is how the traffic density around the world of shipping okay shipping traffic density so these are the main routes which you are going to i will not spend much time explaining you this because you are going to do the geography maritime geography and where you are going to learn about various uh, routes and main shipping routes and ports and bunkering ports that you are going to learn everything about that. Okay. IMO background we will study. After Second World War, lot of development in shipping has taken place because many countries got independence, which were earlier controlled by Europeans. So many countries were Europeans, many countries were under European control and they got independence after Second World War. And as countries became independent, all this trade tra started improving. It started getting formal uh, trade between the international body, international uh, scenario and the within the countries or between the countries. Okay. So, Individual countries also, like India, started developing their shipping. Developing their shipping means purchase of ships, improving ports, opening more ports for their own country benefit. So every country started doing that, and that's how shipping started getting developed. World population also increased day by day, and thereby demand for the articles, demand for the cargo also increased and shipping also increased because of that. Further, you had technological developments taking place, like technology also changed, automation changed, new, new inventories had taken place, and shipping also <clears throat> was no exception, and shipping also changed with the technology. So earlier ships were used to be with wooden ships, then steam ships, then steel built ships, then diesel engines, then small capacity to large capacity, then type of cargo also, different, different type of cargo. Earlier only very limited cargo used to be transported. And now you say, or what I, what I tell during my classes, that you see anything around you, means what is cargo? You see anything with your eyes is cargo. Kuch bhi dekho. Khali, what is not cargo is air. Air is not cargo. But otherwise, everything, whatever you see around you is transported from one country to other country. It is transported from place of abundance to place of scarcity. Okay. So that is why shipping improved population and so world population increased, shipping increased, increase in number and type and sizes of the ship. So ships also became huge, number also of ships increased and their types also changed. Like LPG ship, LNG ship, different chemical tanker, crude tanker, product carriers, container ships, bulk carriers, Offshore supply vessel, multi-purpose supply vessel, diving support vessel, passenger vessel, luxury liner, the row row. You have so many different different types of ships, including car carriers. Okay. A need was felt to have an international body in place for controlling the shipping with respect to safety, security of shipping, and the prevention of marine pollutions from the ship. So United Nations saw that there is a need to control this everything and there should be an international body who will be working uniformly to control this and to improve this. Okay, So therefore, an organization called Intergovernmental Maritime Consultative Organization, which name was IMCO, IMCO. So IMCO was formed and a convention adopted in Geneva in conference convened by United Nations in 1948 and 
IMC or IMCO was established in 1949. So birth of this international organization came in 1949 to study international shipping and to control all the activities. Why this need was there? See, you are having driving rules in India. You are awarded driving license in India. Suppose we take this driving and uh, cars and all. The same driving license, can you, is it valid in uh, Dubai? Is it valid in US? Is it valid no. in uh, Europe? No, 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 no. no. because no. in India, you can have one license, two license, three licenses. Sometimes it is possible to even without visiting or appearing for any test whatsoever, you can get driving license. The uh, temperament, driving skills, knowledge, Everything can be different from the developed countries for drivers in India. So how this license will be valid across? But shipping, this has to be valid because you are moving from, you are moving your ship from one country to other country. So there has to be international rules. There has to be international standards. And to set these international standards, there was need for international body under United Nations and that body came into existence in 1949 under the name of Intergovernmental Maritime Consultative Organization, IMCO, okay, M IMCO, okay. Further, the purpose of IMCO included to encourage the general adoption of highest practical standards of matters concerning maritime safety and efficiency of navigation. So maritime safety and efficiency of navigation, this was on the agenda. And this IMCO, this consultative organization, C was removed because it was not only consultative. It was not only co consulting means you just ask that uh, whether I'm doing correct thing or not. And if he says you're not doing correct thing, okay, he will say, okay, you keep your advice with you. I will go ahead still. So that consultative word was removed in 1982 and it was renamed as IMO, International Maritime Organization, no consultative. Okay. So in 1982, it was re renamed as IMO. Okay. IMO slogan, I will explain IMO slogan and I think we will be able to stop here today uh, after because I have to discuss some more things also. You. Okay. I am a slogan is safe, secure, and efficient shipping on clean oceans. So, a key sentence may start uh, you know, all the uh, what I wants to do that has come. Entire thing is covered there. See, shipping, shipping when you are transporting goods across the world, 90%, it should be safe. Safe means what? The people who are transporting, they should be safe. People around shipping, they should be safe. The property should be safe. Cargo should be safe. And environment also should be safe. While transporting, you should not go on damaging everything and transport just for sake of transporting. No. So it should be safe. It should be secure. Secure means you should be able to safely transport without any threat in mind, like terrorist or like pirates. So people should not have this, uh, they should not be afraid that this is a scare. That So it should be secured. This transportation of goods should be secured business. Okay. And also it should be efficient. And this efficient business means you must be able to do quick and efficient operation of the ship quick and efficient operation of loading and discharging of the cargo and transportation of the cargo. Efficiency, I will give you example also. Like when you say, how much mileage your motorcycle or car gives you? How much mileage? Okay. So when you are purchasing new thing, they are saying, okay, how much car will give? 20, 20 kilometers per liter. Or how much this motorcycle will give? Oh, it is 60, 85 kilometers per liter. Okay. Or it may be 40 kilometers per liter, depending on engine. And in between you check, 
and in between you say, oh, my car or motorcycle still gives me 40 kilometer per liter. That means your car is efficient to whatever it is built. So shipping also should be like that, that ships should be running efficient on the ocean. And while transporting these goods from point A to point B, ocean should not be damaged. Oceans should be kept clean. You should not make them dirty. You should not make air polluted. You should not be polluting waters. And that is why it is saying safe, secure and efficient shipping on clean oceans. This is the slogan of IMO. Okay. IMO creates and adopts conventions which are ratified by the countries. A convention usually comes into force after a certain number of states representing a certain percentage of the world fleet ratify it. So convention and all, we will, uh, I will explain you separately what it is. Like solar center, when 25 countries and whose combined tonnage was there 50%, then it was accepted. Solas is one of the conventions, main conventions, safety of life at sea. Okay, IS, IMO also develops codes which normally recommendatory unless it is made mandatory under provision of convention. One such important code is IMDG code. Okay, so let me just uh, recap on the lecture. I do not want to this thing. This slide we will take it again during our next lecture. But our first chapter, there is a definite twenty mark question every time. It can be flag of convenience, advantages, disadvantages, or it can be language may be different, different, like asking for uh, why ship owner is attracted to flag of convenience, what are disadvantages and disadvantages, then uh, uh, why so much uh, people are attracted to Panama uh, for registry. So such type of questions, or what is this registration process, why ships are required to be registered. So this question is for 20 marks and almost every uh, exam, there is one question on registration and flag of convenience. Okay. And it is very, very important. You understand the concept uh, from the roots and from the basics so that you will be able to, because uh, with this knowledge, we are going to have the maritime administration of the countries flag state control, port state control, all these concepts also we must understand. Okay. There is also a question on international maritime organization, every alternate or every exam, that what is importance of IMO in shipping, why shipping has developed uh, and why, how it makes a more safe, secure, efficient shipping because of IMO how it is making, or what is this IMO organization, and what is this structure, like organogram of uh, IMO. So such questions are appearing for 20 marks. Okay, so both topics, registration and flag of convenience is a 20 mark question topic. IMO is also 20 mark question topic, but uh, language of the question may be different, different. Many a times uh, students make general mistake Indian Maritime Administration and International Maritime Organization. In this in exam hall, they get confused. And sometimes for Indian Maritime Administration, they write entire history and geography of your IMO. And at the end, they realize, oh, this was only asking Indian Maritime Administration. It was not asking international body IMO. Okay, so such things. So you're in exam or while reading, you must know the difference between Indian Maritime Administration and International Maritime Organization. So you have to be a little careful on this because these are general mistakes uh, are done by um, students, which I see every time. So do not be that because you have spent so much amount of time writing and you don't fetch the, any marks for that because question is different, answer is different. Okay, so with this, I think we will uh, uh, end today's session. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me now also, or you can ask me later, maybe during second, uh, our uh, uh, second lecture.
So thank you so much. Why we call ship as C ship? Uh, right from beginning, uh, when uh, uh, this is also a tradition by Britishers, the English language uh, 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 gives uh, the ship a feminine gender, and she is called uh, uh, she, feminine gender. And even for um, uh, Indian languages, also we are giving her fe uh, ship a uh, feminine gender only. Uh, okay, most sir. of the languages. Huh. Uh, sir, I just wanted to know the difference between this IMO means not uh, means how if people get uh, confused in this IMO and the uh, which is written on back side of the ship, is it uh, similar or something different? The IMO number which is written IMO, on the ship. Okay, one minute, one minute. IMO number is given when you do international uh, registration with IMO. So you are purchasing ship, you are ship owner, you have registered it somewhere else. But internationally also, it is mandatory to inform them that you are having so and so ship. Then they will award you one number. And this IMO number is uh, written on the uh, ship's uh, uh, body or hull of the ship. But the both are same, right? Yes. This IMO, <coughs> IMO, this is organization we are discussing. And the number is also given by that organization. Okay, 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 sir. Okay. Thank you so much. So, uh, long form of that is also same International Maritime Organization. So, they have given pref prefix as IMO number so and so. It becomes easier for tracing internationally because this your national uh, registration numbers can keep on changing. Or when you sell, buy, you have give it to different country, everything will change. But IMO number will remain same, same. Sir, any any connection between the uh, at starting of the lecture you said regarding the Geneva Convention of High Seas hmm. and I am any connection between these two? Uh, connection means conventions are see sometimes uh, like uh, example for giving MLC MLC is Maritime Labor Convention although it is made by uh, ILO International Labor Organization but they have also uh, called IMO uh, several times for consultation because IMO is on the merchant navy's topic. The labor who is working in uh, uh, on ships, merchant navy ships, they are making convention for that. So they have to consult IMO also. They have to consult uh, various other uh, parties also. But finally, convention has come there like that. Okay. So IMO was also involved in this convention. So IMO has to be. Even terrorists also, terrorists or pirates. So that, that is dealt by security, security or yes. uh, United yes. Nations uh, Security Council. But no, IMO is also to, uh, involved equally because their ships are affected. No, their ships with international shipping business is affected. So uh, these two are not contradictory. I mean, no, nothing, no rules and regulations will be contradictory between them. No, they will not be contra contradictory. Means no, no two bodies will make uh, different rules. Different regulations. Ah, yes. Okay. So, can we end today's session? How was the session? You can be uh, spoken or verbal about it. No problem. Did you like the uh, explanation, uh, uh, the way I am making? Or yes, sir. Very much. Yes, sir. 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 Thank you so much. That Thank you so much, sir. Well, if I am able to reach to you and if I am able to make you understand the topics, and uh, sometimes I will tell you, the shipping people who are already in uh, uh, working in shipping, they are also doing these uh, courses, and they may be sometimes bored because, because we are going to basic level, considering that non shippies are also present here in class. So for them to understand everything, suppose I say launch tomorrow. So suppose 50% uh, students who are attending this lecture, they will know what is launch. Okay, launch or ferry boat like that. But the uh, layman outside who is attending this lecture, just uh, making entry into shipping, he may not understand launch. So for that launch to explain, I will have to spend five minutes with him. That because So yes. such level I go so that they also understand but uh, other people who are already familiar with the subject little bit they are uh, they may feel bored 
that they will say, oh, he is explaining so much that Lohanch also has to be explained. What is there to know about Lohanch? But person who has not seen a ship, it is not difficult for him to understand. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So thank you so much. Have a good thank day. You, and uh, thank you, uh, read your uh, study material because you are spending, okay, not by traveling, at least at home also, you are spending three hours uh, uh, lecture and doing this as a part-time from working uh, uh, environment. Uh, so you must pass. Everybody must pass and go to next uh, level. That is what it is. Then only it is worth spending three hours and uh, otherwise uh, you are not doing justice to yourself. Okay? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Yes, we can uh, end the recording. We we'll have finished with the lectures. Okay, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank okay, you so sir. much. Thank you. See you thank next you. time. Thank you. Take care from.